a lot of this isn't going to make sense to you. And I'm sorry about that. I'm just going to start at the beginning with the house. I lived here until I was 11, but I wasn't allowed inside half the rooms. Inside the mailbox were bills from seven years ago, marked urgent, open immediately. I hadn't been back since my brother Lewis's funeral. In her will, my mother left me a key, but didn't tell me what it unlocked. Maybe she thought I'd know. Or she thought the mystery would be enough to bring me back. No one had driven this way in a long time, but I saw a few hoof prints. The truth is, even after I inherited the house, I never thought I'd come back to it. But now I had questions about my family that only the house knew the answers to. The house was exactly like I remembered it, the way I'd been dreaming about it. As a child, the house made me uncomfortable in a way I couldn't put into words. Now, as a 17-year-old, I knew exactly what those words were. I was afraid of the house. I hoped the key might unlock the front door. It didn't. Looking in, I felt like the house itself had been waiting for me. Crawling through the doggy door used to be a lot easier when I was 11. The power had been turned off the night we left. 
for the first time in years. I felt like I was home. But instead of a family, there were just memories of one. Like how after Lewis started working at the cannery, we all got sick of eating salmon. Except our cat, Molly. Or how only one restaurant would deliver to our house. So we had Chinese a lot. Nothing in the house looked abnormal. There was just too much of it, like a smile with too many teeth. Great Grandpa Sven built a music box for Barbara, along with the rest of the house. Mom always told me to stay out of the basement, so I wasn't too surprised when the key didn't fit. Even the fireplace had a story. Edie told me the bricks came from the original house after it sank. The table was still a wreck from the night we left. My mom was the only one of us who could imagine great grandma Edie living in a nursing home. It was like a bomb had gone off, killing everyone but sparing the furniture. A lot of things got left behind in the whirlwind of that last night. My mom wasn't much of an optimist, but she never stopped believing that my brother Milton was alive. After Milton disappeared, mom sealed up all the bedrooms. Then Edie retaliated and drilled peepholes. I spent a lot of time playing in Great Uncle Walter's room. I think my mom sometimes regretted not sealing it up. Lewis told me there were secret passages, but I never believed him. Turns out, my mom was really good at keeping secrets. Now it was time to find out what my mom had been afraid of. <sighs> Reading this, maybe it sounds like I had a plan, but I had no idea what was behind that door. <sighs> Just like I had no idea where all this was gonna lead. December 13th, 1947. Dear Diary, I'll be gone soon, but I wanted to tell somebody about what's going to happen. It started when Mom sent me to bed without dinner. I woke up and I was starving, so I looked around for something to eat. My Halloween candy was all gone. The gerbil food was dry, but I didn't mind it. Mom, can 
I come out now? Sweetheart, it's late. Go to sleep. Eating Christopher, but I held back. I kept eating and eating. things that night. Then I heard chirping outside my window. It was a barn swallow going back to her nest. I reached out for her. Suddenly, I was a cat. I tried to be quiet, but the bird was really scared. Mom and Dad didn't even look at me. Got her. I could tell she was getting really tired. was up in the big tree. I promised Dad I wouldn't climb it anymore. All I cared about was eating that mama bird. I gobbled her up. 
and suddenly I was an owl. First, all I heard was the wind. Then I heard little teeth nibbling in the grass. 